So which of these stars had a teacher for a parent? Was it Sir Mick Jagger, Girls Aloud's Kimberly Walsh or Katie Tunstall? The answer is all three of them. You're watching The Right Stuff with Steve First, Carol Thatcher and Richard Herring. Still to come this morning, are we too quick to take offence these days? Maybe it's a good thing, you know, have people looking out for you in case we're upset by what so-and-so says, but what if so-and-so then feels they can't speak or feels bullied into silence? Are they then being denied the freedom to express themselves? It is a huge subject. 0207 173 is the number for your thoughts. But first, uh, is it torture being a teacher's child? According to today's producer, a teacher's child herself, it's the only thing worse than being a teacher's pet. Hmm. You, may think it, <laughs> you may think it a cushy number as a teacher's child. You get a lift to and from school every day. If you need help with your homework, there is tuition on tap. And, of course, the bullies are probably going to give you a wide berth. But I'm told you'd be wrong. Those bullies will simply devise more inventive methods of torture, especially if your mum and dad is, in, is on their case in class. Uh, everyone knows parents can be embarrassing, but most kids don't have to share that pain with 30 other brats on a daily basis. And, of course, if your mum's at the front of class, you've got no chance of bunking off. If you're a teacher and a parent now yourself, how can you deal with all the pain you're causing? Is being a teacher's child any better or worse, though, than being a vicar's child or politician's born? I knew a vicar's son, and he struggled with the fact that his mates never really fancied playing around at his case, uh, at his house, in case they were turned into holy do-gooders by his dad. <laughs> and if being a teacher's son is hell, what's it like being a headmaster's son, Richard? Um, well, I mean, that's what my, my show's about, and I think as a, as a, as a 40-year-old, I wanted to look back and think, can I blame... The way I've turned out, you know, because I think you think. What's like, your dad's name? My dad's uh, Keith Herring, T.K. Herring. T.K. Herring. Yeah, so at school I was T.K. Junior. Oh, we have him there. There, there he is. Right. He's a bit older than that now. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> He'll thank you for that later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I think it's. It, I think you imagine, you know, the show's about looking back and trying to work out whether I can blame my adult deficiencies on my child. And I think a lot, that's a temptation for a lot of us to go, oh, I had this awful childhood yep. one way or another, or something in my childhood affected my adult life, but. You know, I think um, there's lots of good things about it, and uh, I think you kind of look back at it and you realise, yeah, there was, there was definitely, you know, it's, at you the get time. Sus- what was it you like? Get, at you the get time? The, you, everyone's suspicious of you, but I'd gone through the whole school system, you know, so I had friends anyway. But but you know, you're aware that people are suspicious of you. You're aware there's kind of a, an aura around you that, that must be the horrible, kid, though. Well, to be yes, aware and, that kids are suspicious. Yes, of you, no, I mean, mean you, you had to deal with it, and it was a, it was a difficult thing to deal with in a way. But I think it, you, it made you, you know, for me, I, I decided, you know, at school he's. Mr. Herring, and at home he's my dad, and you compartmentalise it as two different people, you know. So, and and, and I managed to stick with that. Maybe it's it, it might make me a better writer because I'm able to kind of displace myself a little bit. It might make me slightly schizophrenic that I'm kind of you know almost like two people. But uh, you know, and I did managed get, to stick get, with that. Did he have to discipline you at school? Well, there's there's a thing in the show. The show starts where I did. A, there was the Ascension Day service, and there was a minute silence, and the whole school was there. It was in this churchyard, and right at the beginning of the minute silence, I decided to do a massive belch as a joke. But it came out really loud, and so uh, and so everyone just laughed, and my dad was furious, and I could see him going red, and then he looked into the school, saw me laughing, and kind of obviously realised straight away was that him, you know. So then he had to make he has to make a split second decision: does he punish me? Does he let me off? You know, is it going to be more embarrassing for him for me? And it's to be honest, it's only since I started writing this show that I thought about that from his point of view, yeah, yeah. and that actually he's in an impo- I put him in an impossible yeah. situation. Mm. I think it's much much harder to be the teacher or the headmaster. Because you know you, you're in that position where but you go, why, why? am I going to be? I'm going to treat him more, you know, harsher to be more fair. Is, is, it, is it a mistake for parent teachers to have their children at the school they teach? I mean, wouldn't it be better? I mean, there's no problem if if if, if he's a head teacher at one school and you're at another school. The problem there is no problem. I think uh, yeah, if, if that's possible. I mean, I grew up in the countryside, so there wasn't so like a massive choice, choice yeah. in school. So I would I would have had to travel 10, 15 miles to school every day for that and leave all the friends behind that I'd I'd had in the other schools. You know, I suppose I could have got, but yeah, that, that, yeah. that seems a lot. You know, and I think. It's kind of character building in a way, and, and I think actually, ultimately, people kind of forget. You know, certainly the people in your lesson, they're not for five years thinking, oh, that's the headmaster's son, that's, you know, I just became Richard Herring, that slightly annoying kid who's always trying to be funny. <laughs> uh, and, and I think it probably helped me as a comedian because, you know, I think probably it did give me this aura of kind of ready Breck style protection from bullies. <laughs> and I think if, I, if my dad hadn't been the headmaster, they probably would have beaten me up. You're to make it sound appealing. They would have beaten me up for being annoying. So it actually meant that I could, <laughs> I could get out all my rubbish comedy at school, <laughs> ruin everyone else's life. And be life, safe. And then actually become a comedian. So. What about you, Carol? Well, I 
I've got some sympathy for Richard, actually, yeah, and I'm looking forward to um, seeing the show. When I was a student, my mother was Secretary of State for Education. <laughs> Thatcher the milk snatcher. We managed so... to get one person on the panel who trumps me. <laughs> 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 The rest of my class, or lecture hall, you know, used to go off and demonstrate against her. Coming along, Carol, off to demonstrate against your mum. What was I meant to do? I was in a no-win situation. Stand outside mum's office with a large placard saying, out, 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 would not have improved mother-daughter relationship at home, would it? So, um, it's not an easy But it must have been strange one. for you. I mean, that Str is a strange, strange situation. There are not many children that are ever going to be able to say that every hundred years, every millennia. There are not going to be that many children in that no, position. No, it was a good dress rehearsal when she became Prime Minister. But on the notes here, on the notes here, it says, lists folks with uh, famous, uh, famous folks who had teachers as parents. And they seem to have got over the hang-ups. Indeed, some of them seem to have done rather well. Tom Cruise, Mick Jagger and so on. So I think you can get used yeah. to it. Yeah. I'm going to come back to you, Steve. I want to take some calls if yeah, I can. Yeah. Amy, who's on the line first, okay, please? Okay, let's go to Claire first on line two. Claire, good morning. Hi. Hi, Hi Matthew. Uh, are you a teacher? Yes, I am, yes. Uh, and you've got kids at the school where you teach? Yes, my son is. He's um, in year three. He's seven. Okay. Uh, how's it going? Really brilliant. I teach in my classroom's three doors along from his. Um, and I've taught at the school since he started there. At one point, I was teaching him every other week for a day. And it's never caused a problem. No problems at all? No, I think in the four years that we've been at school together, he's called me mummy twice at school. Um, but apart from that, he has no problem at all. So he, 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 he didn't get his head kicked in for that then? Sorry? <laughs> he didn't get his head kicked in for that little slip Not of the yet. time. Not that. <laughs> well, that, that does break the question uh, when, when he's in secondary school. It, if you were a teacher at secondary level, would you be happy having him then at the school where you teach? Um, I think that would be totally mm. different. I, older kids, more problems. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, the, the age I teach, I'm quite lucky that, you know, I, I think I have quite a good relationship with the children anyway, and that helps. But secondary school would be a totally different ball game, I okay. think. All right, Claire, thank you for that. Let's have another. Okay, let's go to Lucy then on line one. Lucy, good morning. Hello. Uh, hello there. Uh, your parents a teacher? Yes, my mum was a teacher at my primary school. And what was that like for you? Um, I did get bullied quite a bit. I'm surprised. I thought having a teacher there, you would be sort of safe. Well, she was a horrible teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I have stories all the time about how bad, how nasty she was to everyone, so... What was she like as a parent, Lucy? Uh, well, pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> Never that bad, really. No, I'm glad to hear. That must be very strange to have your parents a teacher and they're one of the nasty teachers. Yeah. yeah. That's a high price to pay. Thank you for that, Lucy. What do your folks do, Steve? Uh, musicians. Musicians? Yeah, well, my uh, dad and stepdad were well, my mum. Mum just married musicians. Classical groupie. Um, <laughs> surely it works, it, conversely, it works the other way, that if, if you're, you're you've, maybe when the teacher goes into the, into the t staff room, they're bullied if, the, if your child offspring is... is a nightmare. So they give, uh, they give it, the other che teacher a gym. I think it was more difficult for the other teachers as well, you know, cause, because they cause you know, so I, did, I actually probably got more grief off some of the teachers, but then, because, you know, they were, they were getting back at me. I remember, like, some games teachers pointing out I was not need or something, going, oh, the headmaster's son's not need, you know, because <laughs> that's their boss, yeah. isn't it? Okay. You know, so. yeah, yeah. It and that, to do okay. that is like, kind of unforgivable, okay. really, isn't it? To sure. Team. We've got to go to the break. We've got to go to a break. Thank you for all the calls on that. After the ads, we're asking if we're too quick to take offence. As I said earlier, taking offence seems to have become something of a national pastime in recent years. You can't say this, you can't say that. That's offensive. Maybe taking a stand over what someone says is a healthy thing, you know, a moral majority deciding which views are acceptable and which are not. But then maybe it's also a bad thing because freedom of speech and freedom, freedom of thought become its victims. Uh, 027 173 is the number for your thoughts, and we welcome all of them here on the show. We'll take any views. Are we too quick to take offence to take offence on behalf of others, people we don't even know? Your shout after a short break, back in three. What percentage of people say they are offended by something they see, read or hear at least once a month? Is it 33, 66 or 99? Answer after the break.